Ah, uh, hello, I'm Mike Lennon uh, of Lennon Sales and Lennon Racewear. I'm about to rig a moth today, starting with the base, very basics, putting the mast in and so on, then going through to the tuning setup. And on the way there, going through all the small details of the cams and so on, uh, of how to set the boat up so it goes as fast as possible. So first of all, the basics, putting the mast together, straightforward enough. But here at Hailing Island, we've got a lot of sand. So first of all, I'll clean it off, make sure there's no sand in there. Just slide it together, making sure it's located squarely. And then just a little bit of tape around it. This keeps the sand out, but also stops it from twisting when you put the sail onto the mast or the mast onto the sail and you twist it round, the top part can stay where it is and the bottom part might twist around the joint, which once, the, once it's, if you don't notice that, once you're rigged, you can't undo it. You've got to take the whole mast out and start again. So if you put tape on, it stops it twisting when you do the rigging. If you've got a nice grassy area, I would normally rig on the grass. It's much simpler, easier. There's less wind down there on the grass, less likely for the sail to blow away and so on. Up here on the boat, it tends to be a bit windier. Uh, but because here we've got no um, grass, we've got rubble, concrete, it's all really bad for the sail. If you, if you move the sail while you're rigging it on rough ground, it can tear the batten pockets or uh, just scuff the sail quite badly. So for the life of the sail, to make it last longer, uh, you're better rigging uh, in this kind of environment on top of the boat. This is slightly more tricky because the wind can blow the sail off, but as, as I say, it does help the life of the sail if you do it this way. So, very difficult to stop the sail having some contact with the ground, but minimum as possible. It's a very light wind day today, so the sail probably won't blow around, but if you're doing this in, the, in 20 knots, it, it is a little bit more tricky. It's better to find a sheltered area to do it in. Okay, next is to put the mast in. Um, the cams are all in the sail. What I'm gonna do is take out the lower two and take out the lower three, but lower two is fine. Just makes it a little easier when you um, put the mast in. The cams don't get the wrong side of the mast, so it doesn't matter which side they go. Uh, if the cams aren't there, it can't get, they can't go the wrong side. So I'll just take them out um, while I slide the mast in. I'll take this one out as well. This cam's tied on for reasons we'll explain later, but clearly it's tied onto the tack of the sail. So I've just got to make sure I don't slide the mast around that piece of string. So I'm just carefully placing it so it doesn't twist around the string as I go in. I'll just slide the mast straight up to the top now, but I will locate it on the top button. Um, the top buttons are hardest to get on once you, once you mass all the way in, so it's easier to, to, um, to locate at the top as you're going rather than trying to do it at the end. You can do it, but it's, it's just easier this way. So you can see here, it's uh, on the mast already. I slid it into, into place and then without forcing the sail, I'll just slide it on, make sure it's in at the top. Yep. Now it's on, located. I can zip it up. That's one done. So next one, same deal. I'll just click it on. It's in place. Okay, on the mast I've got these um, polythene, high modulus polythene um, protection. This is also very low friction, uh, so uh, it makes the, it helps the cam slide more easily. There's, there is a small step to get onto these, so I've just got to make sure while I'm rigging that the cam is located already over the step. If, if not, it can jam on this edge. So I'm just making sure it's in place before I zip up. Uh, the cams just need to make sure they're located on the batten leg properly um, to make sure they go on more easily and you can twist them on. You can, you can, 
they can be um, sometimes difficult to get on, so you can just twist them on if they won't go on. The, the pocket being open here helps as well. Once you've got it in place, you just close it up. Okay, I'm going to finish off putting the cams in, the masts in already, so I can just finish this job off. Um, it's quite easy uh, with, with it on the top of the mast. I find it very easy with the with the zipper open on top. You can just really easily just force it on without having to do to any real effort. Again, I'll just pull it down, make sure I'm on the. It's jammed there now, this time on the um, plastic. There we go, on the polythene low friction. The new battens are very um, soft in the front, so it actually makes it very easy to manipulate the batten on compared to the old spec batten, which was stiffer. I've reached the spreader fitting, so what I'm going to do now is pull this down to the spreader fitting, which will actually tension the whole sail up. And at this point, which starts to look like a sail, to do this, you need the batten all the same way around, really. Makes it easier. And then, and then I've just located it on the spreader shoulder. Uh, now you can see it's tensioned it and made, made it into a sail. Right, so I've got this piece of elastic in here, which, pull, which fastens on the last cam arm on the batten shoulder to pull the when I let the Cunningham off, it helps pull, pull the um, tension upwards um, to let the Cunningham off and make the sail deeper. Um, this is actually in the way for rigging, so what I do is just check it's not going to foul up and be in the wrong place. It's actually easier just to pull it out of there for now. Um, this needs to go through this cam, through the middle of it, and then down to the next down to here and then with this little bit of string here I just tie it or loop it should I say over the cam arm before this last cam goes on. This is the one on the piece of string which will show you why, why the piece of string works in a minute. And that then locates in there. Leave that there for a second while we just pull this cam down and lock it on there. That's the spreader fitting. Now it's kind of already locked up and in a sail shape. It makes this one easier to get on. So I'll just force that one on. Right, and now we are ready to hoist the sail, or get it in the position where ready to hoist. A little thing, if you want to be really neat, you can tuck these in. We don't want these little, little vortexes forming on the end of our zips. So it's a little detail. <laughs> I doubt it makes any difference at all to boat speed, but it makes you feel better. Now I'm using a particular method here, because my shrouds uh, are permanently attached. Um, I've kind of got to manipulate my rig in a slightly different way. Uh, so I'm just going to lay the rig, the boat's head to wind-ish. Um, I'll lay the rig out slightly ahead of the, uh, of the mast stump. You don't have to do it this way, it's just the way I've developed over the um, years because the shrouds are on and the four stays on, everything's on. So that goes around there. This needs to be inside the mast foot. Can, if, it's out, if it's the wrong side, you can still rig it, but it's just more difficult. Rigging wise, today I'm on two and a half mil die form. I've used two mil, uh, two mil rod. I'm going to try SK. Um, 99, um, a Marlo super low stretch stuff on the shrouds only, that's the next thing to try. It's two and a half mil, so it's, it's a little on the fat side. I, I like the two mil die form I've used, I used most of last season because it's quite flexible. But I've also got two mil rod, which is not quite as user friendly, but very slightly lower stretch. If that makes any difference, I'm not sure it does on the shrouds, but probably on the four steer, it makes a small difference. Right, so I'll just shackle this in place. It's slightly fiddly because these end fittings are quite big. Only just fit on the beak. This goes on next. 
this is in the way so for now I'll just push it in place like that until I get the rig up and then I'll put it in properly. I've got to remember to do that. Sometimes I forget. Go out without the pin. All right, check the shrouds are going to be loose enough to get the rig up without it being stopped by the shroud tension. So I'll just let it off a little. Okay, I'm ready to hoist now. Just check it's all going to go, not get snagged up. Okay, here we go. If it's windy, it's more difficult, but there's no wind today, so it should be relatively straightforward. Before I do, I just look over my shoulder and check that this isn't wrapped around anything. Okay, now we're up. Just check them on my... I've got an adjustable force there, so I've got sheaves here at the front, which these pulleys, these bits of rope really need to sit on to work properly. I'll just tension it up. In a breeze, it would be bouncing around now, so I'll just tension it up to stop it bouncing. 